up next on Your Pittsburgh. We travel to New York to meet a Pittsburgher who's become a star. Tony Award winner Billy Porter takes us backstage at the hit musical Kinky Boots. So I have to ice my feet on a daily basis. You wanted to know why do Pittsburghers hit the brakes when they get to a tunnel? John Shumway gets to the bottom of it and finds a possible solution. There's no need to slow down. Everybody knows about the terrible towel, but wait until you see some of the cool new versions this year. I'm Sarah Arbogast, and coming up, I'll show you, plus how you can vote on some top secret new items. More people are moving downtown. We'll show you some of the options from the affordable to the extravagant. And David and I check out one of the newest restaurants in town where dinner comes with a show. From KDKA-TV, this is Your Pittsburgh with Kimberly Gill and David Highfield. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us for Your Pittsburgh. This is a show about the new and exciting things happening in our area, and tonight we begin with a Pittsburgher who's become a star. Billy Porter. A star he is. He won a Tony Award this year and stars in a musical that's packing people in. And tomorrow happens to be Billy Porter Day in the city of Pittsburgh. You know you've made it when they have a day named after you. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Well, I recently went to New York City and talked with Porter backstage to see what it's like to be a Broadway star. Kinky Boots, that's the name of the Tony Award winning musical starring Billy Porter. That's him in the red dress. His performance as Lola, a drag queen who helps save a struggling shoemaker, is so extraordinary. And the American Theatre Wing's Tony goes to Billy Porter. Kinky Boots. He won a Tony this year for Best Actor in a Musical. Hey, Pittsburgh, I love you all. Thank you for being so supportive. And plenty of Pittsburghers are traveling to Broadway to see the show. Susan and Bill Fawcett are from Cannonsburg. So That's excited. Good. That's good. Just, just can't forward, believe so. we actually got the tickets. Ow, Papa got a brand new shoe. A life of broken heels got you down. The show's music is written by Cindy Lopper and performances pretty much sell out. It's here on this stage that Porter performs eight times a week and each time wearing four to six inch high heels. These are the kinky boots, the boots that are kinky. Um, yes, you see that heel? You see that heel? That's what I have to wear every day. He shows me around his dressing room before one of his shows. Some of the clothes. I have a big sort of, you know, kind of Whitney Houston power ballad moment in act two. And the congratulatory notes. Oh, you know, a little note from Quincy Jones. <laughs> you I know, just that. a little something, something. Outside the theater, past a life-size picture of him as Lola, I ask what this kind of success means to him. It's extraordinary, you know? I mean, it's a dream that every artist and wants to sort of be able to experience. For Billy, the dream began growing up in East Liberty. He sang at Faith Center Church of God in Christ and joined a theater program at Reisenstein Middle School. That summer, I saw the Tony Awards and I saw Dream Girls. What is the dream and there were people that looked like me and sang like me. Billy was inspired. He went on to attend Pittsburgh's Creative and Performing Arts High School where... Yeah, you have to see that one. Mindy Rossi Stabler was one of his teachers. He just had that energy and that, and that passion. He said, he said, Mindy, I can't do anything else. I know that this is what I have to do. He graduated from Carnegie Mellon and since... He's been on Broadway. This is him in Greece back in 1994. He's been in movies, released albums, and has performed at City Theater on the South Side. Back in his dressing room, Billy shows me some photos of someone special. This is my mother at opening, crying, because she's a crybaby. <laughs> she's always crying. And when he won the Tony, he was sure to thank her. My mother, Clarinda Jean Johnson Porter Ford at home in Pittsburgh. His mom was watching closely at a party on the north side. You are the personification of true Christianity. Your willingness to embrace that which you don't understand with unconditional love is a template that the world could benefit from employing. Your courage gives me life, and I love you. Holding back emotion, she talked with us about Billy's determination. There's a lot of times he wanted to quit, but he did not quit. 
And now, he's not only in the role of a lifetime, he's proud to star in a show that has a message he believes in. It's all about acceptance, it's all about love, it's all about being present and being true to who you are. That's the only thing that we have. Now, Billy has also written a play based on his family about his relationship with his mom after he came out to her as a gay man and how that relationship has evolved over time. And I asked him what's next for him. And he said, I'm not thinking about next. I've always done that. And he said he wants to enjoy the right now. Good advice. Isn't it? Good yeah. advice indeed. Yeah, I was cheering for him. I was glad to see that he didn't forget about his Pittsburgh roots. And no. we are just so proud of him here. I mean, having a Billy Porter day, that sums it all up. You know you've made it if you've got your own day, right? You're absolutely right. <laughs> all right, well, it's time to answer your questions. We call this segment, You Wanted to Know. Yeah, we asked you last time, do you want to know why people around here seem to slow down when they drive into a tunnel? Or do you want to know about foods that are uniquely Pittsburgh? Well, the tunnel breaking phenomenon won out with 63% of the vote, so we asked John Shumway to get to the bottom of it, and he may have found a few solutions. Aboard the Phantom's Revenge, plunging towards uncertainty. Oh, they're closing up on us. Is that closing? Shut up, shut up, shut up! Escaping the alien mothership in Independence Day, or on the parkway, racing towards a tunnel. Perception is reality. On a roller coaster or in a movie, we pay for the thrill. The amygdala is going to say, oh, we're going to die. But on the parkway, we have brakes and use them liberally. Fear. I slow down. Why? Just tunnel vision? It really does happen. And in fact, you can see the, the, the backups of the taillights. But there's really not much that we can do about it. Dr. Paul Friday says the fear of tunnels is a form of claustrophobia. There's an area of the brain that sets off an alarm when our visual field begins to constrict. People seem to think it's a Pittsburgh thing. No, it's a human thing. Ann Montgomery discovered her tunnel fear 20 years ago when she entered a turnpike tunnel with her two small children in her minivan. I just felt like I was gonna pass out. I got really dizzy. I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. And I just felt like I was gonna hit the wall and we were gonna get hurt. Like, it just felt like it was closing in. She stopped her van in the middle of the tunnel and a state trooper had to drive it out. Anne hasn't driven into a tunnel since. I don't think I'll make it to the end. PennDOT thinks the current work on the Squirrel Hill Tunnel with its higher ceiling and brighter lighting might help. Dr. Friday says they should paint the tunnel ceiling blue. Traffic would probably go faster because we get the perception of openness. It would seem like the sky. Cessna says PennDOT's not investing in any blue paint and believes that the tunnel entrances, whether in daylight or at night, creep people out no matter what they do. The reality is you know, we believe people will still continue to slow down approaching the tunnels. But there might be a light of hope coming into the tunnel world. Now, autonomous car would not slow down because there is no need to slow down. Raj Raj Kumar at CMU says the driverless car they showed off in Pittsburgh a few weeks ago cannot suffer from tunnel phobia. They do not think like humans do. Which might just be the solution for drivers like Ann. Then I wouldn't have the fear that I wouldn't be able to make it. Then I'd go. I would do it. So in 15 or 20 years, when autonomous cars are readily available, problem solved. I'm John Shumway for your Pittsburgh. I'm glad John Shumway straightened that out for us, though, because it's something that's always baffled me. You know, you're going 60 miles an hour, and then before you know it, you're down to right. 20, and then you, when you get out of the tunnels, it's no traffic there, and you're going, what in the world just happened? So, right. yeah, so now we know. And, and even in, you, you can't go any faster than the car in front of you. Right. So even if you don't want to break, you sort of have to. Yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh. Okay, well now it's your turn to get involved. We want you to vote. Tell us what you want to know for the next episode of Your Pittsburgh. Do you want to know about Lake Monongahela? What is it and how much of Pittsburgh would be underwater if it existed today? Or do you want to know about some of the cool things invented around here? From emoticons to Big Macs to Pittsburgh's role in daylight saving time. Let us know which one you want to know about. Go to kdk.com slash your Pittsburgh and vote. Whichever story gets more votes, we'll have it for you on our next show. Still to come, wait until you hear about the new idea Giant Eagle is hatching up. Don't miss your chance to vote on the newest Steelers merchandise. Sarah Arbogast gives us a sneak peek. This is the fan flag or the fan cape. You don't have to go to Penn State anymore for that fabulous creamery ice cream. Find out where you can get it right here in the burg. Plus, get ready for a thrilling ride. 
And we visit a restaurant that may be a first in Pittsburgh. Suck in the soup, baby. <laughs> Suck in the soup. Welcome back, everyone. Changes for a favorite Pittsburgh pizza place. Penn State's Creamery Ice Cream is now available right here in the Berg. And the newest idea from Giant Eagle. That's just some of what's happening as we check out what's new in the Berg. Giant Eagle's building a Market District Express here in Peters Township. It'll be a smaller version of their special Market District stores, complete with a pharmacy and a restaurant. Just down Route 19, the first Tim Hortons in our area is being built in South Strabane. Tim Hortons is known for coffee and donuts and is extremely popular in Canada. If it's ice cream from the Penn State Creamery you crave, there's a new place to get it. Clavon's in the Strip has a rich history and it's reopened with coffee fudge and that creamery ice cream. You could work off some of those calories at Pittsburgh's first indoor bicycle park. The Wheel Mill is in Homewood. It has some pretty impressive ramps and is set up for all skill levels. Construction begins early next year on the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry. It'll have two ice rinks, and the Penguins will practice there when Consol isn't available. Cheers to East Liberty. The Livermore Bar has moved into the former Waffle Shop location. It offers a light menu and some stylish drinks. Finally, a Pittsburgh favorite. Minio's Pizza in Squirrel Hill is expanding into the building next door to allow for more seats, a bigger menu, and a full-service bar. And the Minio's expansion should be open at the beginning of November. Still to come, why are more people moving downtown? It's breathtaking. It nice? I'll show you some of the exciting living options. Plus the newest versions of the Steelers' terrible towel. And don't miss your chance to weigh in on future products. And I'm totally cheating and using my fingers. And David and I take you to a new restaurant that's truly unique for Pittsburgh. You're watching Your Pittsburgh on KDKA-TV with Kimberly Gill and David Highfield. Downtown Pittsburgh, on most nights, it used to get pretty empty after office workers went home, but that is changing. Yeah, more and more people are now calling downtown Pittsburgh home, choosing to live in the heart of the city. And as you're about to see, there's a variety of people and a variety of living options from high end to affordable. If you haven't been to downtown Pittsburgh for a while, you might be surprised by the change. From the Cultural District to Market Square, there are new restaurants and shops and a growing number of places to live. Welcome to my place. Avanti Johnson's condo has exposed brick, high ceilings, a wall of windows, and beautiful granite countertops. Hers is one of 17 units in a historic building now called 1 Fifth Ave. I can just walk where I want to go. Johnson works downtown and also wanted to be close for events. I love it and I would not go back. This was the best decision I made. We talked to the developer Todd Palsik on the building's rooftop deck. We wanted to make, you know, Soho style lofts and we knew there was a market for people who wanted condos under $300,000. The condos here range from the 150s to more than half a million. Moving on up in price to this deluxe condo in the sky. This unit on the 19th floor of Chatham Towers has windows in every direction. At night, this place is just, it's on fire. It's lit up. The place has been renovated impeccably from the marble floors to the kitchen to the fireplace in the living room. There are three bedrooms and four baths. Towel warmers. No expense has been spared. Now this is my favorite thing. Isn't this spectacular? This wine room is temperature controlled. It can store a thousand bottles of wine. This is the Franco Harris Immaculate Reception Wine. <laughs> now, does this come with the house? I don't know. Everything's place? negotiable. Everything's <laughs> negotiable. So who buys a place like this? Lori Hummel with Howard Hanna says typically... Their children have left the house and people are starting to think, I don't need to keep my big house for years and years to come. Let's enjoy our lives. Let's do something cool and different and move downtown and walk to restaurants, walk to the theater, walk to sporting events. This 3,600 square foot condo lists for nearly $800,000. But if you're not in the market to buy, there are plenty of places to rent. It's breathtaking. Nice? Look at this. 
This place is called Riverview, and there's a good reason. Just look at this panoramic view of the three rivers. Developer Lucas Pyatt shows us around. Maybe you've been inside this place when it was the old state office building, but just look at it now. Granite all over the place, stainless steel appliances, and some of the units are even two stories. It feels almost like a suburban townhouse. It's pretty neat. And how about this for a space saver? A washer and dryer all in one. In the morning, when you go to work, put everything in, come back, it's all done and ready for you. Rental prices here range from $1,000 to $5,000 a month. Downtown has really changed over the last seven or eight years. Hyatt's company, Millcraft Investments, is one of the reasons. They created high-end condos on top of the old Lazarus department store, developed sold-out apartments in Market Square, and now have plans to replace the old Saks Fifth Avenue location with retail stores and apartments. Now we're finding that it's, you know, a lot of people that are young professionals that are even starting families in downtown. We see people with the, with the strollers in downtown now. It's pretty exciting. Now, the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership says about 9,000 people currently live downtown, but Lucas Pyatt predicts there could be 20,000 in the next five or 10 years. And that's a big increase. And the other thing that people are talking about is whether a grocery store, maybe a Giant Eagle, could come downtown. Yeah, I think it would uh, influence a lot of people to move downtown. I know that's one of the biggest things is people say, well, where do you shop if you live downtown? So right. if they brought a grocery store, maybe more people would come. That'd be great. We will see. <laughs> Well, when you think all things Pittsburgh, chances are the terrible towel pops into your head. That it does, and legendary radio announcer Myron Cope came up with a towel in the 70s, but this year you'll see some towels that look a lot different. Sarah Arbogast is here to show us and give us a sneak peek at some possible future Steelers products, right Sarah? That's right. We have some prototype products and you'll actually have a chance to vote for your favorite coming up. But first, the terrible towel. You're used to seeing the original, but wait until you see some of the new versions. It's a sight to see thousands of twirling terrible towels. There's nothing more iconic than the terrible towel. You see it in space. You see it uh, in the Middle East. They are everywhere, and now every single one is made right here in the Berg at Little Earth Productions on the south side. But it's not just the traditional towel flying off the presses here. There are some brand new versions. First up, the bling towel. It's black with lots of crystals. Next, individual collectible game day towels. This one perfect for when the Steelers stomp the Ravens on October 20th. And we make a limited edition. We only make 5,000 pieces of these. Other new products for fans, these bags for men. There's a backpack, a weekend bag, and a messenger bag. For the ladies, check out these new fashion purses, black and gold, of course. They're being sold at high-end department stores like Nordstrom. People will see, oh, you're a Steelers fan, but you're not clubbed over the head with it. Some new items not yet on the market. The Gator Dana, it works as a headpiece or a scarf. There's also this smart wristlet. It's a little purse that holds your cell phone and opens up into a wallet. It's small enough to carry into the stadium. Coming soon, this braided headband and this silky scarf. Last but not least, something for the ultimate super fan. This is the fan flag or the fan cape. It's really a fun piece and this will be um, a $14.99 retail. Okay, so I had to bring you guys a little something from Little Ooh, Earth. These are boy. flags, Steelers flags, and you can, you know, use them for whatever. I, I like the Steeler cape idea. The cape is yeah. awesome. Because <laughs> it sort of, it makes you feel like a superhero, right? <laughs> you know? There okay. you go. What do you think of this? Yeah. Very I, nice. I have know? a feeling we're going to see a lot of those in the stands. I'll just wave yeah, mine in the wind right. like that. That's very nice. Well, there <laughs> you <nice>. go. <laughs> okay, so now here's your chance to vote on the cape or any of the other products you'd like to see made in the future. Little Earth wants to know which one is your favorite. So go to kdka.com slash your Pittsburgh and vote for the Gator Dana, the Smart Wristlet, the Braided Headband, the Silky Scarf, or the cape. All right, don't you think I'm working this? Your favorite, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Very Thanks, cute. Sarah. Sure. Thank you, Sarah. All right, still to come, it's time to eat. We're headed to a new restaurant in town where the food is authentic and you get a front row seat to the kitchen. Stay with us. Next time on Your Pittsburgh. I love it when you do this. Well, I'll go to the other side. Oh, come on. <laughs> she may be best known for being Mrs. Huxtable on The Cosby Show. I never tire of speaking about The Cosby Show. But do you know about actress Felicia Rashad's connection to Pittsburgh and what keeps her coming back? Pittsburgh looks very different now than it did then. Why she has a soft spot for the bird. 
next time on Your Pittsburgh. Welcome back, everyone. Pittsburgh, you know, has so many wonderful restaurants now, but a new one in Squirrel Hill is bringing something different to the table. It's all about authentic Chinese cuisine, and dinner there comes with an impressive performance. It's called Everyday Noodles, but the noodles here are anything but typical. Every wonton, dumpling, and noodle is hand-rolled or pulled fresh, and you can watch it all through this big window. Jeepers! The dining experience is fast and casual. The prices are affordable, so we ordered a bunch. Pickled cucumbers, pot stickers, and oh boy, the soup dumplings. Garnished with soy sauce and fresh ginger, they were like doughy bits of heaven. But owner Mike Chen let us in on a trick to eating them. You poke a hole in the dough to let the steam and juices seep out. Suck the soup. And suck the soup, okay? That way you don't burn your mouth. Suck in the soup, baby. <laughs> suck in the soup. Chin actually brings in chefs from Taiwan to train his staff. I like to introduce what we call authentic Chinese food. This kind of food right now I feel is time to bring into Pittsburgh. By the end of the night, David and I put down the chopsticks and went caveman style. And I'm totally cheating and using my fingers. But no matter how you eat, from the pork belly slider to the milk tapioca bubble tea and ooh, those noodles, dining here is an experience. Well, Chen also owns China Palace in Monroeville and Wexford, and he and his son Alan started Tamari in Lawrenceville and Warrendale. Yeah, and even if you're chopstick challenged like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what did they offer me? The kitty ones that four year olds use. They have the little rubber bands on top. I didn't have to resort to that. But even if you're not into the chopsticks, you're still going to have a great time. Yeah, it's a great restaurant. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of your Pittsburgh from all of us here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Pittsburgh has been brought to you by Edgar Snyder and Associates.